Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to cover four topics. First, what is Git? Second, we want to talk about how Git can help us as software engineers and Flutter developers. Third, we want to see how Git in general works and how we can work with it. And the fourth and last part is if there are viable alternatives to Git. All right, and now without further ado, let's get started in this episode. So what is Git? Git is an open sourced distributed version control system with a market share of over 70%. It is one of the largest and like de facto standards for version control systems. But what makes it so unique? One very important thing to mention first is that Git is the technology that is used to take care of version controlling and not GitHub or GitLab. These are platforms that gives you the opportunity to create repositories. Today, we want to work with GitHub and Git together. Just to keep it in mind, Git is unequal to GitHub or Bitbucket or something like that. So they are platforms that delivers a service for Git. All right, with that out of the way, Git is a distributed version control system. So what is a control system? A control system contains any set of data and keeps track of them and saves them somewhere safe. The next part is the version control system. So as a version control system, we add a history to the whole data that we have there inside. So all changes that we do on this subset of data has been a history and we can navigate through this history back and forth as we like. So if we make some mistakes, we can roll back or if we have something that we want to see it once more, we can also go back in history and check how it is done. So, and the next part is distributed. Distributed system in this case means we have usually a so-called repository, a remote repository that lives in the cloud or in any kind of platform. Here comes GitHub, GitLab and so on into play because they offer us such a platform to have a remote repository. What that means is they have a local copy of all the data that we have on their servers but also we have that locally for every client that uses this data that means if I work on a project and Dave works on a project we both share the same repository the same history and we have everything as a local clone from one remote repository but we will see that in a second a bit more in detail all right but before we go deeper into the naming structures and exactly how git is working we want to check out why is is Git important for us developers and especially for us Flutter developers. First and foremost, Flutter is a so-called open source project. That means we have the possibility to see every single line of code and also the whole history, how it is being created and how it comes to the place where it is at the moment. So if you check out on GitHub, the possibility to search the whole repository, you can clone the whole repository with all its information, history, people who worked on it, and so on and so forth, thanks to Git and GitHub. Also, it is possible to work on that by just receiving pull requests and creating your own commits. That is one big benefit. For the second benefit, you as a developer and Flutter developer has the chance to create your own repositories with your source code, which gives you two advantages. First, you create a repository for yourself to keep track on the code. And also the second benefit is that you can download and clone the code for different devices. So if you want to work uh, with a laptop and a computer or something like that, you have the possibility. The third big benefit is that you as a developer get maybe the chance to be saved as into the eternity because the GitHub created a fantastic uh, project which is called GitHub Arctic Vault. And if you're getting inside of that, you will get saved or your data getting saved in a vault in the Arctic to save and persist source code. To deposit every active public repository on GitHub for safekeeping, in the GitHub Arctic Code Vault. 
All right, but now enough the talk. Now let's get jump into namings, understand how Git works in general. Let's get started. By the way, as you know me, this is the right moment to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, because this will help us a lot. Thank you so much for your support. All right, but before we start with the next point, point three, why we use Git and what we are using it for, we want to use our little board here. The first idea that we have is that two people work together in a project. In our case, Mac and Machtab. Okay, and we have our GitHub. GitHub is our container for our repository. We keep that in mind. Now let's assume Max wants to push some changes of code into GitHub. All right, because we have both the same clone, we have here a local copy and we have here a local copy. But also what we have is a repository on top on GitHub. Now, this one has been updated. Thanks to Max, who is pushing his changes to GitHub, also GitHub is updating. Now what Machtab can do is she can get the information. So now she is also updated. This here is called a pull. And on this side, we call it a push. So, and this is very important. So push goes into GitHub and the pull comes from GitHub down to Machtab's location. Okay, fantastic. But what would happen if I push some changes? So I make push one and Machtab does the same in the direction. So she does also make a push here, push two. Now what happens is we come into something called a conflict. And this is where GitHub shines and where GitHub helps us a lot to solve the problems. So keep on going. We are going now into the source code where you can see more how it works. All right, so our adventure for Git starts at GitHub. We want to create our first account for that. So you will find the sign up button right above here. And here on that part, you can create your first account. With that, you will have the possibility to create repositories. Of course, I have already an account, so we will jump right into that one. So if if you log in the first time to GitHub, you will have most likely a more empty page like I have here. So you can see a little bit of the history, all your repositories that you have created already, and also some uh, user profile information. But we want to do now a new repository. You can do that by clicking on the green button here or on the plus icon up here, which you can't see because of my face now, but there is also a new repository button. So if you click that, you have the possibility to create a repository with any name that you like. For example, our first repo. As you see, we have the possibility to give the repository every name because it includes our namespace. So your username will be the owner. Now we can give a description like first GitHub project or first GitHub repository. And now you have the possibility to create a repository. Please take aware that I don't select any of these. So we don't create a git ignore yet, a license or a readme file. So if we create this repository, you can get already a quick setup. So this gives you an information on how to clone your repository and how to get started with your first commit. But we want to do that together. The next thing that you need to do is installing git. If you have already installed Flutter, you will have git also installed. But if not, you check out the git-scm.com page where you can download Git directly. How you can check if you have it already installed? Open up a terminal or PowerShell or CMD on your Windows machine and try to enter Git. If you get these information, like how you can use it or um, so on, just try to enter git-version. Then you will get the version of the Git information and then you see that it is already installed. So in my home directory, I created a folder called Git Tutorial. If I'm jumping in, it's currently empty. And on the left side, you can see we have the terminal open and I am already navigated to the Git Tutorial part. So here inside, we can now create our first folders, files and so on and so forth. So my idea is first initialize Git. So we say Git init. So as you see, we initialized an empty Git repository. But what does that mean actually? If we command shift and point inside of the directory, we will find this Git folder. So we have now a folder created with all the important information here that Git needs to know. All right, so the next part now that we have created this Git initialization would be to create a file inside here. So we want to touch a readme.md. So as you can see, you can double click this readme.md and open it up inside of an editor of your choice. In my point is it Visual Studio Code. So now I can change here the readme 
how I want it with my information. And with that, we have the first change. And this change we want now to push and commit to our repository that lives on GitHub. All right, so for that, we move over to our terminal again and say git commit hyphen m for message. And now we pass in the message like initial commit. All right, so make sure that they are in quotes and you are press now return. So as you see now, you get the information here on master branch, initial commit, untracked files, nothing added to the commit, but untracked files. What does that mean? We have to say that we want to push these files to git. So we want to git at the readme.md file. If you don't get any information here, that's totally fine. But now let's try again to commit our information. So now you can see that we have one file changed and two insertions here. So we added two lines of code. But now important to know, did we push already something to the server or on GitHub? The answer here is no. If we check out the repository again, you can see if we refresh here that nothing has changed actually. The local commits is like a staging environment that is completely separated to the whole environment that you know. And everything that is belonging there is just locally on your machine. Now our task is it to push the information up to the server. So let's do that next. So the next thing that we want to do is saying git status. With that, we can see that we are currently on a branch called master. What a branch is, is like a separation of your code that only belongs to you locally. So we are on a branch that called master, which is mostly the main branch where everyone works on and that there is a file that is not committed yet. But that's totally fine. We don't really need this to commit. All right, but now we want to push that to GitHub. So how do we do that? First, we have to go back to our GitHub repository and up here, you will find this HTTP and HTTP, uh, SSH key. If you set up an SSH key, you can use this link. But if you don't, you can use the HTTPS. In general, you would start with HTTPS. SSH is a little bit more in detail. All right, so now you can take this link. So we go back to our terminal and enter git remote add, and then we say origin. This is the name of our system that we want to have. So it is also possible to work with multiple repositories that live somewhere else. So if you would say you have a GitHub client and you have like, for example, Bitbucket, you could also take both of them into account. Also, what you could do is if you create a so-called fork, a fork is like a complete clone of a repository inside of GitHub, then you can get that also with different namings. Like origin is just the name. And now we passed in our URL. And if we press enter now, you see that nothing happened actually. But what we are able now to do is working with our um, repository in GitHub. All right, so let's say we want to be on master and we want to push master. For that, we say git push um, origin master. And what happens now is authentication failed. One second. All right, I had an authentication problem because of two-factor authentication. I put a link down in the video description if you have the same problems. But now let's try to get further. So git push origin master. So we want to push our master branch to git origin. And as you can see, we received now the information that we have a new branch on our repository called master and we pushed some objects in it. So how does that look like on GitHub? If we refresh our page here, you can see automatically created thanks to the readme.md that here is a file down here and visible. So this is where you can add additional information. I put also a link down in the video description how you create a fantastic readme for your projects. All right. But this time we work directly on the master branch. Usually in a normal project, you don't do that. You always take the master branch as the main information and pull out a branch for it where you work and change your stuff. And after you are finished, you merge back with a pull request into master. So how do we do that? If you are on your project in your terminal, you can say git branch. And what happens? It lists you all the branches that exists on your project. So what we can do is say git checkout hyphen B and give a name for your branch. So for example, my new branch. 
So if we now say again git branch and list all our branches, you can see that the master branch is white and the my new branch is green. So this means this branch is active at the moment. So what does that mean is if we go back to our Visual Studio code and change some more lines like first, per first informations and with some text. And if we go back to our terminal, we can see if I say git commit with a message, right? So like new information, we modified the readme files. So if we want to push now these new changes into our new branch, we can say git status. And as you see, our readme file is now modified, but not staged, so we cannot commit it yet. So for that, we will say git add, and then we say readme.md. We say once more git status, we can see now it's modified and green, which means that it is possible to commit that. So we execute git commit with a message that we can call, for example, uh, more information in readme. And we push the whole thing. So you can see once more, we change the files. We have four more insertions. We have one deletion. And last but not least, we say git push. Uh, git push, we have to say the upstream and the branch, my new branch. And now seconds later, we can see that the new branch is created on our remote and we have the possibility to create a new pull request. So let's have a look what a pull request is. As you can see here already, we have new changes that have been recently pushed to a specific branch. And now what we can do is we can compare and create a pull request. What that means is we want to merge our branch that is completely separated to the master branch into the master branch that they are unified again. So with that, our co-workers could create their own branches. We create and develop in parallel, and then we merge both back into master. So we can avoid merging conflicts and also resolve them before we merge. So we can give here some comments. Thanks to Markdown, we can have Markdown support here. You can add lists like lists. You can also create checkboxes here that are, is very useful from time to time. So if you want to create a checkbox, like um, I have read the documentation. So also checkboxes are possible here inside that can be ticked. All right, with all these information, we create a pull request. And here we have now the possibility to see once more all the files that has been changed, all the information that has been changed. And now we can allow to create and to merge this pull request. So we can click here on merge pull request. We confirm once more the merge with our name. And now we have the possibility to check out our code, which has the latest information on the master branch. So, and with that, you know the most things about Git and how to use it. So now let's head back to Max and see what he has still to tell you. All right, so now we learned why we need Git, how we can use it as software engineers, why it is important for Flutter, and we learned how to use it. But now the last step that is very important for us is, are there any viable alternatives? For example, if you join a company, there could be that they use completely different tools. It don't have to be that they use Git because Git is only one option, which is open source and distributed. But some companies prefer, for example, centralized systems. One option here is the Preforces Helix Core option, which is a centralized version control system. What does that mean is that on one server, it contains all the smarts and the newest source code, and you don't clone the whole history with down onto your computer, but just a small part. So Helix Core is one of the most common alternatives to Git in companies or enterprise customers. Another one is an older one, which is called SVN. SVN stands for subversion and offers you the same behavior, but it is a little bit more flexible. So these two are the alternatives that are actually nameable. Everything else is way too small and minor to really give it a name. I think Mercurial is also one that you could get into, but all of them try to solve the same problems so that you as a developer can work together in a team very easily with your source code and that you are able to solve merge conflicts. All right, so that's it with today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and till the next time, see ya guys. Next step is what are viable alternatives? 
We learned now why we needed it as developers. 